Hello, I'm Cameron, the rector of St. John the Divine Anglican Church, serving the Cetus Dye. I come to you today from the traditional and unceded territory of the Squamish Nation. Welcome. I am so glad that you are able to join us today for this service for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Before we get started, a few announcements. The first is an announcement of Thanksgiving that the House Sound Music Festival went off uh, well this past week, which we were happy to sponsor and host here at St. John the Divine. The second is that today is the last day to put in your Easter Purdy's order fundraiser. Uh, if you or your family or neighbors might enjoy a sweet treat to celebrate Easter, and you'd like to support our life and ministry here at St. John's, uh, please put your order in today. The link for that is on the website. Next week is Palm Sunday, where we mark and remember Jesus's entry into Jerusalem and begin Holy Week. I invite you to uh, go out uh, outside your door, maybe uh, around where you live, and see what you can find with which that you might like to welcome Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Uh, and maybe some branches or some greenery, and I invite you to put it on your door or to make a cross. And if you feel so moved, send a picture into us here at the St. John's office, and we will put it up online for the community as a uh, virtual Palm Sunday uh, procession. Lastly, after Palm Sunday is Holy Week, the week that leads up to Easter. And this is, uh, like the name suggests, a very holy week. And we are happy to be offering online services every day of Holy Week, together with Squamish United, as well as with a special guest, Pastor Darcy Reimer from the River Church. There'll be some more information for how you'll be able to join uh, any of those services that you'd like to attend uh, in future emails. So I think that's it. So let us prepare ourselves to worship this morning by taking a few deep breaths together. And maybe you can close your eyes if you're comfortable with that. And let's take a deep breath in and let it out. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out fear. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out anxiety. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out those things that might be troubling you today. Breathe in the love of God. Keep on breathing till you are breathing out the love of God onto the entire world. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God be with you. Let us pray. God of glory, your revelation through Jesus Christ calls us into your covenant of love. Enable us, to na- us now to reflect your love so that barriers erected by sin may be broken down and all people may be drawn to you through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Jeremiah, 31 verses 31 to 34. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Our psalm today is Psalm 51, 1 to 13. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, 
and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Our second reading today is Hebrews 5, verses 5 to 10. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says, also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus, Jesus offered up prayers, prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? 
No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of Christ. Who were these people who wished to see Jesus? Who were these nameless seekers? We have very little information about them from the text. It specifies that they were Greeks, which means that they were not Jews. However, they were among those who were going up to worship at the festival. At this time, there were Gentile devotees to the Hebrew God. Gentile, a term simply meaning not a Jew. So it seems likely that they were part of this group. Nevertheless, they were not exactly insiders. However, they must have caught word somewhere, somehow, of this teacher, and something must have sparked their imagination or curiosity and compelled them to turn aside from their journey, from their observance to seek him out. And so they come to Philip, one of his followers, and say, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. We wish to see Jesus. Something in these words pierce my heart every time I hear them. It feels so clear and honest, direct and simple, almost childlike. And didn't Jesus say something about how we need to approach the kingdom of heaven like a child? Sometimes I think that we live as if we need to be experts to come to Jesus. We need to know all there is to know. We need to have the right words, believe the right things. We need to be put together, holy and good enough. We need to have all our ducks in a row, or at least most of them. However, I'm certain these Greeks didn't know all there was to know about this person they were seeking. I'm sure they didn't know fully what they were getting themselves into. The story for me is a reminder that I don't need to know exactly what I am getting myself into to seek Jesus, to be drawn to God. It is enough sometimes that we fumble our way towards God, towards love and life. because we are being drawn to God, drawn to the one lifted up from the earth, drawn to the one who made and loves us. God is acting on us like a sweet fragrance, like a flash of color, like faint music wafting through the air that causes us to turn aside, to seek after and follow without fully understanding. We are drawn to the very heart of God. And it is enough sometimes to simply respond by saying, we wish to see Jesus. I wish to see Jesus. This, I believe, is a posture we can take, or at least try to take as followers of Jesus that can transform the way we engage with the world as radically as the call to love God and our neighbor when I pray and don't feel I have the right words, remember, we wish to see Jesus. When I'm going into a meeting or about to do some other task, we wish to see Jesus. 
when I walk through the woods or my apartment's hallway or the grocery store aisles. We wish to see Jesus. When I meet another child of God, whether friend or stranger, one I love or one I have trouble loving, we wish to see Jesus. When I come face to face with, face with a mystery, something that is too big for me that I don't fully understand, we wish to see Jesus. It is the simplest kind of prayer. And when we approach life with this posture of humility, with open hands, open eyes, and open hearts, with the desire to see Jesus, the chances are that we just might encounter the living God. As we count down the days until Holy Week and Easter, as we enter into those great mysteries of our faith, I invite you to approach with hands, eyes, and hearts open. I invite you to approach with humility, curiosity, and imagination. Approach with the posture of these nameless saints who said we wish to see Jesus. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that to seek the God who calls and draws us in. Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Gracious and loving God, we come to you so that we may articulate and share one another's fears and burdens as we know you always receive ours. As Jesus in the days before his passion offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, let us pray for those who suffer, those who are in need, and those who seek reconciliation. And let us pray to you, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Holy One, you are anywhere and everywhere. We uplift to your safekeeping all of those in need of your protection and comfort this day. Your people in Myanmar, Hong Kong, and other places where the state is violently suppressing protest against freedom de denied in places where violence prevails, Malian soldiers killed in an attack, increasing numbers of school children and others kidnapped for ransom in countries like Nigeria and the Democratic Republic of Congo, eight souls murdered in Atlanta, Georgia, USA this week in what appears to be a hate crime against women of Asian heritage, and our two Canadian citizens coincidentally named Michael, held over two years under harsh conditions, suddenly facing trial in China on espionage charges with no support and probable dire outcomes. Anything else in our hearts at this time? We pray to you. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, artist of souls. You sculpted a people for yourself 
out of the rocks of wilderness and fasting. Help us as we take up your invitation to prayer and simplicity, that the discipline of these 40 days may sharpen our hunger for the feast of your holy friendship and wet our thirst for the living water you offer. In our diocese these week, this week, we pray for St. Christopher's, West Vancouver, the Reverend Karen Urquhart, St. Cuthbert in Delta, the Reverend Paul Wuerl, the Archdeaconry of Granville, the Venerable Stephanie Shepherd, Regional Archdeacon, and here at St. John the Divine in Squamish, we pray for our Reverend Cameron Guchar. Praying to you, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for our fair, the rest of our fair parish family at St. John's and for those requesting our prayers this week. For Roy, for Clive, Nina, Ed, Rob, Jessica, Susan, Eleanor, Lori, and for any others in our hearts at this time. And we pray for the House Sound Women's Centre, the residents of Hilltop House, the residents of Shannon Falls, and the patients of Squamish General Hospital. We pray to you, Lord, hear our prayer. In this time of COVID-19, we pray for the sick, the grieving, for those isolated and alone, along with healthcare professionals, researchers, and emergency personnel. We give thanks for increasing supplies of vaccines arriving every week and hope that comes with advanced schedules and delivery to essential workers in our province. Help us be patient, Lord, with restrictions being removed so slowly and compassionate towards those whose mental health is being strained by living in this pandemic world for so long. We pray to you, Lord, hear our prayer. Coax us out of our fear, Creator God, so that we may know your radical, amazing grace in all the big and seemingly small moments of each day when we live for you and in you, and so we lift up our joys as well. We give thanks for love and light and sun and this equinox. We give thanks for all those who helped us find our way. We say thank you and amen to all those people and encounters that bring smiles to our faces so that our hearts burst. And now we offer our personal thanks, thanksgivings, for blessings received this week. Help us to remember that sensation, which is your love, O oh God, that sensation of a bursting heart. God of compassion, you know our faults, and yet you promise to forgive. Keep us in your presence and give us your wisdom. Open our hearts to gladness, call dry bones to dance, and restore to us the joy of your salvation.
lost But now when found Was blind But now I see T'was grace that taught My heart to fear And grace my fears Relief gathering our prayers and praises into one. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.